Hello and welcome to another edition of the Eternal Journey. Hopefully this is the first in the series of subtitled videos that I'm going to be bringing to you, just to make the videos a little bit more accessible for our community. But today we're looking at a primarily carrier deck, which is primarily focused around Rizan Great Bow Master and how to make him, well, a great Great Bow Master. So Rizan is a card that's sort of stood out to me and been impressive after I originally did dismiss it. I thought, well, six is a lot. It is like a 5-4 Reckless, but in the primarily carry deck with the 30 spells that we do have, it is going to be very likely that we are going to have the lifesteal basically always on, as well as just because we've got a bunch of card draw, we're going to be consistently finding our Rizans as well. And in the matchups where Rizan is good, you really want to find him. Just play on turn six and turn seven just absolutely blow up your whatever your aggro opponent might be up to now reckless is perhaps a bit of a downside here we did, probably would have preferred this if i had like endurance or just anything else but if anything reckless does means that you can't ever misplay you can't ever you know uh, not attack with your five power lifesteal so you've got that coming for you at least but generally it's a pretty great hit off ikaria and this is just going to be primarily just like a bit of a control deck that's just going to try and finish the game with Riz and the carrier. I've seen that pretty much forever, but this is perhaps more of like the FJP removal pile rather than like FJS, which you traditionally see, just because we do have a bunch more card draw, things like Wisdom of the Elders. Uh, because we are playing sort of a control deck as well, I do prefer the Genev Merchant here just as Aegis. So if you do get to play it, you are going to be able to block with it. It's going to be very difficult for your opponent to sort of chew through this and if this trades like an only Ronin and helps you find your hailstorm that's mostly fine so because we are using the primal merchant our options are a little bit more limited but we don't basically the standard options that i'd expect this deck to actually want if it had a sideboard so i've got the huruban here to sort of just access to more power because we are quite power heavy because we do have sixes sevens and well a six and an eight as well in the weapons just as our win conditions i've got the vision of austerity here which is Probably going to be good against stuff like Obelisk or Chalice, as well as it can probably get <laughs> disciplined weights off us, which is kind of nice. Uh, Hellstorm, I don't really like playing four in the main deck most of the time because when it's bad, it's bad, but having access to it whenever you want is great. Alpine Tracker is sort of like a mini Hailstorm, it's got like a little bit more utility. This can pop up a load of Grendins, but it can also kill any opposing Rune Hammers or just sort of be able to finish your opponent off. I do slightly prefer having Alpine Tracker in the main deck so you're able to buff it with a carrier because it carries buffs do work really well with charge. But I feel like this is a bit more of a toolbox item so I'm happy for it to be in the market for now though, that could change. And again, same with the Thunderstrike Dragon, this is pretty much just for the Grandia matchups just to have like, uh, turn like, I don't know, a power we don't need into two flying threats. Again, I do sort of prefer to have this in the deck as well because then you can hit it with War Cries, but I think it's fine to sacrifice that because then you don't accidentally draw it when you were sort of stuck on power you to draw something that wasn't another six drop but it's also going to help you in those grinding matchups where you do need to actually just get through your opponent's removal and we do a fine draw of that already because each carry does take pretty much two removal spells or two spells in general to deal with but just having more of that sort of effect is just nice of being able to close out the game so the weapon suite I've selected is quite narrow. We've not got many weapons, so there's no Sword of a Carry or anything like that. Although I could say actually playing Sword of a Carry because it does bosh Teacher of Humility, so maybe it's worthwhile. But I've just got the two Rune Hammers, a Star Steel Die Show, which is excellent with a carry buffs, as well as just being mostly fine at just killing two things off your opponent. And I've got the Sword of the Sky King, which is often just like a gain eight killer thing. And with a carry, it's like a gain 13, gain 18, you know, just... Go ham, just gain a bunch of armor, which is like virtual life gain, really. It's gonna keep you in the game. And the Dongo is just great in control matchups where there's not many units in play. You're just able to just get the head, just kill your opponent in like two or three turns with uh, whatever else you've been able to do. So, for the most part, it's just like a bunch of interaction in terms of the spells. The Levitate, you could probably change this if you wanted to. Um, I've seen a lot of Aegis threats on the ladder right now with the TGP sort of Berserker deck, so I do like to pop Aegis as. Well, it's just been able to sometimes give Genev like surprise flying and block something. But just a, a kind chip that just gets us through the deck and just enables Rizan is going to be pretty nice. So I could see an argument for perhaps changing it. You maybe you could just change this to another threat. Could even maybe go up to like the, the fourth merchant and just place some Alpine trackers in the main. Won't, uh, won't blame me for that. But overall, let's uh, take this deck on the ladder and see what we can actually do. Oh, 
Okay, and we're on the play. This sounds sort of good because you have like a way of stabilizing the board as well as a win condition. I'd ideally like to have the second primal source so we could fire this wisdom elders, but we do have two crests here, so I think I will keep it. Probably going to lead on the crest of order though, just trying to find a primal source. Uh, Genev Merchant is basically a primal source because it is able to fetch us up the power from our thing here, as well as just be able to, if we actually need it, is able to fetch us a hailstorm. Uh, Rizan's probably good as well, so it looks like we are going to be trading something for a power here just to get us up to that point. Uh, Titch of Humility is fine. Jedi Merchant blocks it. Uh, Pony will need like Thing plus like initiation as well to get through it. Um, I suppose just upgrade the Justice Sigil to be a Hero Banner. I mean, I do sort of want to keep this Wizard of the Elders. It's probably got quite enough tricks to be able to actually just make this a chump block here. So, yeah, probably just to sort of chump there. Well, right on time, Hailstorm. And hopefully that bone doesn't just like make anything ridiculous next turn so we can just whiz the elders and just hopefully get up to the point where we can just play Rizan into a carrier. Because we're just merchant sort of interesting, curious what our opponent's getting here. Could be like Sword of Unity or just like uh, Stand Together seems to be the sort of safer choice. So Wisdom first and then we'll play our seat. Probably a bottom V Sword of the Sky King but we're here now so uh, Levitate is just to catch up at this point, we will already have Lifesteal, I believe. Yep, so Seek Power will be the third. Grab a Fire Sigil here. Uh, next, I'm going to also use the Brizan. It's going to attempt to shoot something down. I'm going to suspect that my opponent has fetched up something like a Stand Together, but using a Stand Together when they've only got one thing in play is sort of fine. So they might even just let me have it. So it looks like they are preparing to build a board for uh, Stand Together here. I uh, suspect so our opponent isn't just chest like chaining these uh, wind chests. But Rizan is super impressive. When this is actually just like Siege Rhino just turn up and well, boy, it targets a unit. This is pretty good play on six. Buzz. Not super impressed by it at first. I mean, I'm sort of fine by this. Don't go reckless anymore. I can block. Um, I'm attacking though. Just get in there for 10. Just limit the amount of time my opponent has to be able to mess around with things like stand together. Just by killing them before it's good. Okay, and here we are on the play. Let's take a look at the hand. I mean, it seems I've pretty much everything. It's got Hailstorm. Which should be able to help us stabilize. Got Vanquish as well. I'd like to see some sort of cantrip, so just some way of just drawing our way past this. But other than that, the crest should be able to help us. So I think we'll keep this. Uh, we are also able to hailstorm a teacher because we're on the play. Because the opponent gets to play that teacher, and then we get to hailstorm it. So that is something that you do need to consider in your deck building. So. Teacher isn't the end of the world. Um, we could have played like Island's Favor as just a way of blocking the effect. Uh, but if I see like Echo Card 10, Uncertain, what I brought up to, could be like the Evolution. Um, do want to play this in Carrier at some point, but just rather find some card draw just to pull us ahead. This could be Accelerated Evolution that the Echo Spell opponent drew was. Uh, okay, so Crest of Glue, just like a strict upgrade on the other power that we had. Um, so now I think we can. Probably bottom the save order because we do want some interaction to go with like our seven drop that ends the game. So we can soon say it's sort of fine. Uh, if our opponent gets to play power plus, okay, that's even better. Uh, if our opponent got to play something like power and the evolution on this just to turn it into a fourth, we're still able to deal with it with the vanquish. Although ideally, I'd like our opponent just to play like. Another waking student play the power to turn both into free freeze and we just get to hailstorm them. Um, end of our opponent's turn, rather than playing the wisdom nails on my turn, even though our opponent 
could have backlash. I'm sort of happier. Well, we can't sniff it out now because our opponent has played. A unit. I just wanted to use the Wisdom just to sniff out what sort of fast effect our opponent could have. Most of, them, most of them shouldn't really matter. There, I'm just going to Wisdom here. Well, pretty glad that we sort of bottomed those other powers, but we'll just be hell slamming here. Uh, pops this Aegis, kills this threat, which is sort of fine. If I want puts Evolution on this, we do get to Vanquish it. I don't suspect this matchup is going to be an easy one, or even a good one. Uh, it will be made easier just by being able to find Rizan, just gets a big flying body. But let's just... That's what I'm here. Could have crested first, just to see if that changed my like, position, but it's unlikely. So, Daishol's going to be good. Um, we could just take a million, because if we play it, our opponent's look like millions of combat tricks, but uh, hopefully if our opponent just like taps out for a Aegis threat, like on the next turn, uh, we should be able to just deal with like two things, and just double dismember two of their guys, because like this coastal guy is a bit of a pain. Yeah, don't really need basic Prime Sigil here. We have pretty defenseless this turn. Sort of hoping our opponent just like tries developing their board next turn, just so we do get to there. Uh, Svetia. That's not fair. Oh, you've locked out my seat power. Uh this guy's guy still has life still, so it's sort of fine really. Let's pop this just to gain some lives. Probably just gonna block, just so that we get to freely make a carrier or also, I want to use some tricks just so we can get some value out of this die show. I do generally prefer die show to be drawn after a carry, but you know what can you do? We just sort of get an 8 4 that's able to hopefully deal with two things. So, this is probably going to force our opponent into playing another trick here, just so they're able to attack into our Ruzan. Um, if they give this endurance, I'll be a bit of a nuisance. Okay, so they do have a fast trick here, must do. That's the only thing that makes sense here. So they must find a style over here, just get more damage in. Okay. Well, they didn't need to find a style there, because it would have been a 6-6, six, six, and they would have got more damage in. Okay, well. So this is sort of rough. I mean, we're only at 7 power, so our options are... Seek power to sniff out a fast spell, in which case it's too late anyway, uh, because we've already committed to the star steel sort of line. But I think I'm just going to make an carrier. Let's get those war cries going. Get in for five to our opponent. Uh, we do need to sort of be careful, of, like stand together or something like that, because it does give this plus two plus two, whereas it only gives this plus one plus one. The opponent does now have two 5.5s five and they've used both the Accelerated Evolutions. I don't believe they've got any left in hand. And I think taking 10's probably fine here because I'm just going to vanquish the other one of these. Uh, maybe it was worthwhile if the Rizan actually, instead of killing the Merchant, um, popping this Aegis, uh, but it wants to actually gain the free lives. Okay, well, it's a sick power here. So there's no fast spell, which is good. So we can't exactly do everything, but it's going to get our war cries on. We can... Okay, so I probably doesn't have a fast spell. So we go for this attack. Um, Prize and our opponent's not got a fast spell there. We get to kill this. Uh, we are at the point now where we do probably just want to chump block or well, attempt to trade, but it is probably just going to be a chump block here. Uh, just keep ourselves alive. We've got 10 war cries on top. Of course, just like allowing this to be fine. Just give it plus three, plus three in lifestyle. Also fine. Uh, yep, got me. We'll just torch this just to get rid of it. And if our opponent protects it, then next turn we'll just. Okay, well, we've got better. Tiger here, so we'll just pop this. Get the fast spell for our opponent here. 
Okay, must just be a levitate then. Okay, well, it's a 14 hour opponent, which is sort of nice. I like they're just for using the rune hammer just to get rid of this. So let's see what our opponent's doing. So they're just doing levitate just to draw a card. So it was levitate, we're correcting our guess. Then we just get to rune hammer here, just 14 hour opponent. And just put them on a position where they need to draw one of their like remaining 15 creatures. Uh, just to like, but if not, we've still like gained 11 and are going to kill their next threat. Yeah, so that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> Our opponent was put us to like a combat trick or like a lone creature and wasn't able to play two units that turn to be able to get around our rune hammer. Okay, well, we're on the draw. This hand might be a little bit too slow. Uh, I don't have an answer to a teacher if that's uh, something we're interested in beating. But I think this hand might just be a little bit too slow. Yeah, I mean, we've got strategizers to sort of improve our hand. Yeah, maybe this is actually just worth keeping. Um, could see you mulligan in that one. Just redraw it, get something a little bit better. I think in this instance it might actually just be fine. If we draw like an undeplete power, just like an actual sigil, then you know we are cooking with gas here. Okay, so play City Glory. Probably just gonna be like permafrost your teacher next turn. Okay, so green white. We're okay. So unfortunately, um Permafrost isn't super great here. Uh, because our opponent will have uh, Accelerated Evolution in their deck, so they will be able to give us Endurance at some point and pop that Permafrost off, but I'm just hoping that Permafrost in this 1-1 one -one will save us like, you know, 5-6 damage, especially if our opponent's able to just go ham and start playing stuff like Levitate just to draw through the deck and be able to do a bunch of damage for us. I'm just casually looking through my bag whilst our uh, opponent's deciding what to do. No small one. There you go. Find everything I need. So our opponent is yeah, so they've hit the, the spell here, so they have found the accelerated evolution, but this has probably saved us a little bit of damage here at least. Probably do you want to try and find well there's our merchant which is great. I uh, just don't want to be strategized flooded here. Our basic sigil is great because this means that Soup will be able to use this Jenna Merchant to hit our Hailstorm and we'll be able to use this Levitate to pop like an Aegis. So we are going to be facing down a 3-3 free free R5-5 here. Um, potentially our opponent is going to build their own carry with the two accelerated evolutions. Okay, so we are just facing down an endurance at this moment in time. Oh, Whew, we got lucky. <laughs> well, this is great then because we get to use our rune hammer to kill something. If our opponent, uh, unless he gets too big, we are able to vanquish it. This could be a finest tower, which is going to be pretty gross because we trade finest tower for a rune hammer, which is not the best. But the intention next is just to be use the merchant just to grab us our hailstorm because I feel like on this board we can still actually use it. Um, hailstorm might no longer be good, in which case it might just be dragon just to keep frets or something like that. Because if you do get to the point where it's like able to play a five six flyer every turn for the next couple of turns, probably going to be in reasonable shape there as well. Also, I do like Jennifer just using levitate and our own Jennifer just to float up and just block this. What does have an evolution left in hand? So gift of battle just going for twelve damage here. Hmm. So we have a jewel now. So we'll scout first. This will help us sort of decide what we want to do. So Rizan's probably good here. Because this will help us to stabilize quite a lot. But we do need to survive the next turn. Uh, we've got seven here plus two from over here, so we've got nine damage to sort of try and absorb. 
So if we think about what we've got left here, this seven can be eight with the evolution. So I'm just thinking about whether it's worthwhile sort of vanquishing this. I think it actually might be. So I strategize here. Unplete power would be great. Um, don't really want the carrier there. Rats. <laughs> well, opponent is. I think they've got enough power here to do it. No, they're going to be one shot. But if they put the endurance on here, then we are pretty dead. Oh, we're in trouble here. Yeah, so Mirage is pretty spicy inclusion. They must have actually used. Right, okay, so they must have been trading the evolutions into the market, which is fair. So, yeah, I think we are basically just dobs here. Yeah. Um, Loves it, doesn't do anything, but let's have a look what we could have drawn. Yeah, torch. Ha, got you. Well, so let's say next game. <sighs> so we've got the Valkyries here to give our point of the business. This is another greedy one that I am going to keep because we're on the play and we've got two crests. So can't just find more power than we're in good shape. Uh, we'll crest of order first. I guess we're just going to need crest of order tribal. Um, the influence is a lot better now in this deck because we do have like the full suite of crests. Uh, Prosper must play that, but we do not want the second to carry. Uh, we're a little bit. Uh, We've got a lot of beefy boys up here. Just want to find some sort of interaction. Okay, so Huru Flyers. Um, yeah, that which is good. Probably just going to Permafrost this just so we don't take like nine damage off it. If we were like a little bit further in the game where we could just use Rizam just to kill it, maybe I'd leave it around. Okay, well. Uh, Probably don't want this Vanquish now, but it's like on 3 4 tribal. But if we draw like another power, that probably just like taps out for some threats, we should be able to harsh rule here. Rats. Well, Runeham is dead because of uh, this bird. But here we are, I kept a greedy hand, and it looks like we could very well be punished here. But if our opponent just extends a bunch and then we're able to just drop one of our harsh rules, I'm sure we in good shape here. So, Crest of Glory. Mm, Strategy is probably as fine as a power. So, we are taking a bunch in because we're taking 3 6 and then we take 4 on top. So, we're taking 10 going to 5, which is quite low. So I'm wishing that this uh, buff was permanent so we could use our Vanquish, but uh, here we are. Shotwing Riders, it's not fine here. We are just going to harsh up. Hopefully this isn't like a backlash because that is us DED. Yep, Unseal is us dead, so we... Okay, well, this is a greedy hand, but I don't think we can actually keep it just because it is a little bit light on the sort of things that I do with my hand, just have a bunch of interaction, but just not a power to get there. Uh, this is a little bit better. Uh, we are able to just strategize on two if we need it. If we are against like a teacher, we can just permafrost it. But so I'm just going to crest to try and find power here, I think. Uh, Vanquish in the dark, I think we will keep it just because if it is bad, like just see only Ronin here, then we are able to strategize it. Although Vanquish is sort of fine against a bunch of only Ronin decks because like. It kills the well praxis. I'm happy to have a vanquisher, unless this is tokens. I think I might be able to hang fire and strategize for a bit. Probably just gonna chuck out the levitate and whatever our opponent plays. Levitate isn't the best uh, against praxis because well they don't have any phages, so its primary use isn't there. Ah, don't teach you how to fly. 
Okay, so no good because we just get to permafrost this. I think now we're at a point where we do want to strategize. I do generally prefer to strategize when we have more cards in hand. Um, I like all this. Uh, let's get rid of Justice Sigil, don't really need that. We'll be able to find more. Next turn's probably just going to be Crest plus uh, Wisdom. If our opponent plays like a big fat threat, then probably just vanquish it, but rats. Um, so we can't actually kill this. We can potentially find a torch or undepleted power, which lets us wisdom. Nah, this is fine. I uh, should have crested first if, if there was a torch on top of the deck, that'd be fine. Uh, the Jedi Merchant here is going to be quite pricey for us. Uh, Tick Pass off, fine. Hopefully, just going to be able to go ham with this Hailstorm and just like, sweep up a bunch of stuff. Come on, just drop a power. Oh yeah, I left it on top, like just knew that was happening. Oh, well, we'll get to trade this for a thing. Um, guess we'll just pale star, just get rid of all this nonsense. Yeah, so actually being hit by a teacher was sort of gross. Um, just completely misplayed by leaving sick power on top of our deck. Don't want to just chuck out the levitate right here though. Yep, no levitate for me. Um, let's get Omen. It costs five, but like, whatever. Um, just kills this, means I can't kind of do anymore. And then hopefully we're able to take over just like Rizan into a carrier carrier. Yes, yeah, it's sort of fine as well. I probably does get a killer one of these, which is sort of a nuisance. But well, then opponent does just have a 2-1, and if they play something else. But I assume if they could have played something else here, then they would have just played that and give that killer instead. Because then it could just get it for more damage. Uh, just Vigilant Austerity this. Uh, don't have to worry about teachers anymore. Uh, though it is a little bit late in the game for them. Um, start off opening up opponent just plays some nonsense, we're still able to sweep up with a hailstorm. And like, levitate into drawing out additional powder so we're able to start chaining these resands. Okay, I'll see what's on top here. Yeah, Torch is probably good. Um, point is at 8 power, so we don't actually need to... actually need to kill this quite yet, because there's sort of nothing our opponent can, can not do by like losing a power. But we'll keep the Torch, because if we draw an undeplete power, and our opponent doesn't trigger the Dawnwalker now, we're able to protect our Rizan from the sort of Dawnwalkers over here. Donga is probably good, but could very well just be a little bit too slow. I do need to think about this one, because uh, this is like a game winning threat. Less so when it's not got Warcrys in it, but we're just going to go like 6 7 7. So, yeah, bottom this to try and find more interaction. Let's boop this. I probably shouldn't have any ambush threats where we're able to get back the Dawnwalkers. And then next time, we should be able to protect ourselves from the Dawnwalker using this torch. The push opponent wasn't like dead dead, but the hand must have just been like full of power or something, or just sort of bad interactive spells that don't actually do anything against flyers, I don't know. Well, sort of the last game, I believe. Okay, well, strategy I should be able to find is the extra primal sauce, and if Hailstorm's good, then Rizan is gonna be even better, so we'll keep this. Rizan's Got life steal basically just from the quality of our hand. Chris Glory here won't mind finding like a power. Uh Solar Sky King as you turn to draw, not quite. Perhaps that's a reason that we might want to have some rise to the challenges back in the deck. I did remove the rises, uh, just to be able to play Rizans. But Rise is probably good, although they might just a little bit like too heavy. Maybe there could be an argument for like a more sort of Mid-range aggressive version of this deck that did play like the uh, Fire Merchant because they'll be able to find like the Risen or a they carry basically on demand. Uh, probably just going to keep whatever's a power here. Hmm. Do I be greedy? Nah, I can't be greedy. 
Well, I can't just keep another spell that we can't actually play because we do need double primal. Now, let's go play as Berserk again. Well, let's just crest it up here. Well, Hash Rule is probably fine. <laughs> um, we do really want to find that primal source. But at least our sort of Icaria influence is sorted. I've been able to curve like Hash Rule into Rizan's probably pretty nice. Okay, so no place in the opponent's sort of nice here. Uh, must be one of those like really unit like draws that this deck can have, which is sort of fine by us. Um, might just snap off the Vanquisher. Yeah, okay, so on that build, uh, the build is just two in for a Lessy here. Well, Shot Jars because there's not really a reason not to. Okay, so Torch is great. Uh, Love Tate is probably sort of medium, but it is a bit of a card draw. Let's go to Wisdom. Uh, let's vanquish this. I think what I'm going to do is attempt to torch the Alessi just to get our opponent to put some resources into it. And then on our turn, we'll just be able to hash it. But we'll be able to have this sort of floating on top of the deck, but there isn't much in the way of card draw in their deck. So, yep, taking some damage here. Also, getting our opponent to use spells defensively is sort of fine as well. Okay, so Stand Together here is pretty much the perfect spell. Okay, well. Let's just pop this Aegis just so we're able to deal with it at some point. And then I guess we charge this. Actually, forgot that I didn't have the second primal source then because the intention was just a hailstorm. But you know, as always, better to be lucky than good. Just drew the torch anyway. Um, hopefully, our opponent watches this video at some points and just sees how lucky we actually are. <laughs> we do need like an undepleted power here. Pretty perfect. So, our opponent is going ham with uh, the Alessis. Uh, I suppose just pass through this board. Just don't want to take seven when we're only at 11. Or let our opponent be able to protect themselves again. Uh, really are looking for that additional power. I don't believe we've bought any power this game. Uh, but just want to play this Rizan out. Feeling pretty smart and thin about the fact that we bottomed that. Um... Okay, feeling pretty smart and thin that we bottomed the side of the Sky King. Okay, well, this stiffs for a fast spell. As well as tries and hits our land drop here. Okay, so we've got Torch, and we've got another Torch, so if our opponent does fight over this, then we are able to just kill their threat. That needs to be something more than just sharpened. Um, they do get to scout anyway. I think I'll Torch again. Just the, they've got six damage like marked on it. Okay, so this will bring it to seven. Yeah. What brings to eight? Our opponent is getting some value here um, because they are able to well gain lives and this still grows. So even though they are sort of throwing spells away, not offensively, throwing them away defensively, um, they are still getting some value here because they do have a five five. But now it's a six six. Um, so I'm hoping that they're not just going to give this like gift of battle and kill us. Just would like our opponent just to play a bunch of spells out. And just let's hash roll them. But if I want players another spell, we're dead anyway because the Hash Rule will leave behind the Aegis Chromic Press Gang. Uh, that's a pretty nice interaction, actually. Yeah, so Gift of Battle kills us, but I didn't really need it. But yeah, good game to on there. Let's uh, let him crack in. I enjoy how sort of enthusiastic Alessi's voice line is for when they attack. Just uh, really sends you a message. Okay, here on the play, um, got like a basically a random mystery card because of the levitate, but hopefully our green hammer's good, so let's just keep it. We've got a carrier. Um, crests make everything better. Uh, I think at this point we might actually want Seat of Glory. Okay, 
Okay, so Xena, this could be reasonable match, actually. Hopefully it's not like a grandy Xenon deck like the versions with Interrogator because that could be a little horrendous for us to deal with. But yeah, Strategize is great here. We draw more powers, get to bottom it. But I thought it was unlikely to have any Aegis, so let's just bin this Levitate. I could have killed Levitate just because we could have actually, with the power we've got, just cycled it. Okay, so this could be either Mask, or it could be the sort of Destiny combo deck that Aetherlam has been playing with. I think I might actually just Rune Hammer this, just to sort of part of be sort of equal on power. Let's play the Promise Surge a lot, so we can, if we draw like a Crest, we can still play that whilst playing our Wisdom next turn. There's a mask. Um, if we find a merchant, yeah, we'll wisdom first, just so we've got more cards to pick from. If we find a merchant, we'll be able to omen this. Um, Hillstorm might still be good, so we'll keep that. There's like one Hillstorm plus Torch, or one Hailstorm plus the Hammer is enough to deal with like a Sandstorm Titan, so should be okay there. Don't mind just like curving Rizan into a carry though, hopefully just winning before opponents able to go two ham with their life gain triggers though. Okay, so this could be for gift of uh, Vazendel, which is a bit of a nuisance for us. Uh, because we can't actually deal with that right now with the cards in hand. So just so kill this, kill the four one behind. Because hopefully the hailstorm will be able to do something. But didn't want our point. We also just attack for free with the merchant. Could be the extract, but I suppose this attack's basically free. Okay, so harsh roll. Yeah, cool. Well, let's trade. I suppose torch is useless. Uh, let's just get this into a vision of austerity. Just stop this. Just ban this sick filth. Just get out of here with your mask of torment. Probably I'm just going to cycle this levitate just to draw a card. Uh, just get deeper into our deck. Just be able to play the liberator out. Yeah. Sort of hoping that our opponent had a gift of Hazendale in hand and just would then at six power just couldn't play it. That's the, that's the sort of life I want to live. Okay, so here we are back at the deck. Don't fear the teacher. We did get um, pretty owned by teacher once, just because our opponent had two of them, but the Vision of Australia, despite costing five, was able to come to the rescue. And we saw the value of Vision of Australia in actually two of the matchups there, as it was able to wipe out a mask of life gain power thing. Can't remember its name. Uh, mask of Time? Yep, yeah, that's the one. Uh, so we didn't get to see the Alpine Tracker in use uh, as well as the thunder strike dragon which means that these cards are probably up for debate and change you know maybe want to stick like an unseal in here or just some other sort of ages threat what we'll do from the deck's probably fine but the levitates can probably go although they are nice little cantrips might want some rise of the challenge although it does slow us down a little bit more uh, i am sort of excited by the prospect of tutoring for a tutor where you could just like rise for jenna to tutor for like vision um, but I suppose the actual exciting bit is where you just like rise for Rizan and just like play it the next turn and turn after, just blow your opponent's board up and then just like start seven them in the face with this huge life stealer. But this deck's still probably fine. Um, there's a lot of work to be done in it. No doubt Trumpet, who is basically the main prime Lacaria player, will probably figure something out and will play that as soon as what well, they get it out there. But having that results, uh, Hopefully we were able to get the subtitles working for this video. Uh, if you were a fan of it, let me know. Um, but thanks for watching. I've been that was all. See you around.